good one. I guess hey guys, hey. what's happening? Nice to see you again. Yeah, good to see you. Good, good. Hanging in. Hanging in. Cool. It's the first day of uh, summer in Europe, too. Yeah, it is. What do you expect from it? Uh, I just, I, I expect to um, get through it and get back home to America in one piece. That's all that I want. That's all I want. Other than that, I'm here for the duration. Okay. <laughs> <You know. laughs> cool. Uh, let's talk about your latest album. Uh -huh. uh, okay. You released a medical album last year. Yeah. You released it through a little blast Yeah. Of course. Sorry. And do uh, you have any feedback from our fans? Um, How did fans receive it? What do you think, Frank? <laughs> yeah, I mean, any any of the uh, it, you know feedback that we got, reviews, things like that, it's all positive. Some of the heavy, some people even even got as far as saying oh, it's the best sounding album you know we've done and everything. So uh, you know we uh, we did a good you know took our time doing it. Yeah. Well, and because I really think it's a great album. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Cool. Uh, are you satisfied with the album, the Blast Records? And uh, do you think that? Uh, the track label is uh, appropriate for suffocation for band. For, for band for um, I mean, I, I think as, as Nuclear Blast as labels a great label. There's no doubt about it. Um, I think as time is going Jeez. on, though, um, with the way that downloading is going and things like that, now okay. you know most industry is shrinking. Um, I think it, a lot more nowadays to really depends on the musician as well as a label, you know? I mean, if you're an up-and-coming band, Nuclear Blast, if they are into you, they're 100% 100 behind you pretty much, and support. God bless them guys, you know what I mean? Really, they've done a, a fabulous job for us, and I, I can't even say anything more than that. But I mean, as time is growing on, I think a lot you're going to see a lot more musicians become more independent and doing things themselves. Just because that's what the time it, it, the times are changing, yeah. you know. That's Nobody can make, really do about that's it. That's the way to make the most money, um, yeah. you know. Is and I, you cut out the labels. Hard for bands things. to make money nowadays, you know what I mean? Back in the day, a lot of people went to the shows; they were always buying merchandise, so smaller bands could exist a lot easier. But now, as the economies and the yeah, governments yeah. are acting all crazy, yeah. and especially ours, forget it. Um, you know, it's just it's sucking the bottom out of that kind of industry. You know? yeah. Not that bands can't make money. I mean, God bless you guys for coming out and seeing us and supporting us for all these years because really we couldn't be here without you. Absolutely. But, um, you know, I think a lot is falling on bands nowadays to really try to do it themselves. And if they can, they will. Yeah. And they will survive. Right, yes, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> Let's put it that way. It's an art form. It's not a job. So people have yeah, to kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. put that difference in yeah, there. Yeah. You know? Okay. It's been uh, 10 years since uh, he released the Souls of the Night. Mm -hmm. So uh, what do you think of... Uh, Playing that album its entirety, and in general, what do you think of playing album? Do you think it's entirety? In, in, in its entirety, well, do you think I, it, does it have any sense, or it's just like a, I mean, a I think, nostalgic thing? Or? I think for certain bands it does, but um, for us, it's like there's so many fans that like things from older albums and newer albums that we try to like mix it up a bit in order to give them a piece of every single record. You know, like. If, if, if it was like the era of Soul Sid and I, and we were out on the road to probably play the whole album in its entirety, it would be something that we would do. But there's so much more old material that people ask for that you hear. There's so much newer material that you want to play for them and support your new records that we kind of stuck in that rut of just taking pieces of each record and, and bringing it out live. You know, we don't mean to do that to you, but if we played every single album live, we'd be there for a full day. So. <laughs> We're trying not to do that and keep all of our limbs intact and Boy, my neck. Yeah. <laughs> well, you could just go out and you just do, uh, do one album for a tour, and, you know, so you do a yeah, whole F and G album. You could do you that. Come back and you do a whole breeding album on the Yeah, I mean, that is, that's... Can you ever thought about it? We haven't thought about it, but, you know, I mean... I mean, it, it's always uh, something... There's no chance of you. Yeah, I mean... There's always a chance. Oh, okay. Yeah, between the members, I mean... One in a million, but there's always a chance. <laughs> I mean, you know, as suffocation goes, I mean, we, we write our material, you know what I mean? We try to put it out and make sure that we can bring some of the better songs from the track out to the guys on live. But to play it a, a full album, I think it deserves its time and place for one. And then for two, it's like a record label doesn't new, normally go out and support a band to do an older record and go and tour for it. So now you're talking about promoters and logistics and things like that. Because, you know, it's hard for a band to go out without getting any tour support and things of that nature. So 
I mean, for us to do all the breeding and spawn, we'd have to get in touch with Roadrunner and see because, you know, Nuclear Blast isn't going to float the bill to get us on a tour to do it. Uh, so, I mean, you know, that's just uh, the logistics of it and the reality. So, we'll just play a couple of songs off of it and give it to you, you know. Yeah. But, I mean, we would probably love to do it. If, there, if we could do something like that, we probably would, okay. you know. Here, let's talk about your fans. You toured uh, South America, North America, Europe. Uh, your opinion, but the differences between your fans? Uh, I mean, uh, South America is nuts. Yeah, they, they love brutal music. You're all different, down there. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah they, they love brutal music down there. Most of the countries down there are just like that's what they want, you know. And, yeah. and then the States is more, it's um, you have your fans there, but I think the States have gotten everything that comes through, so it's it's kind of like um. It's diluted. A yeah, lot. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's know? like diluted and stuff, so it's not as intense. And then over here, the best, the best part about over here in Europe and stuff is that they'll put on the festivals like this, like and this. you throw everything together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So you have death metal, thrash metal, you have power metal, you have yeah, you know, you know the, 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 the hardcore yeah, 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 folk yeah. metal. You like know. yeah, you have everything. Going the folk on. metal is and so huge so over here, like you know, with the violins and things like that, of that nature and. Kind of yeah, thing, it, you know. sounding more Celtic, I guess is how yeah, you yeah. call it. But um, in the United States, it's not even like that at all. I mean, it just doesn't. It, it's just not that way. It's like people are just like more straight. Well, I mean, other than rock and roll, Judas Priest, all the things like bands like that that you know of. You know, when they listen to yeah. death metal, it's either usually just straight black theatrical metal, or it's like more just just straightforward death metal guys. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's it don't and, really and, get and that in there. You definitely have your spots, you know. Throughout the states too, that you know it's die hard and they're brutal and yeah, it's just oh, crazy oh, everywhere else, you know. You know he, but but it's it's the the main thing, the main difference I notice is, is the mix you can put out here and it does well. Whereas yeah, like the states, in a the lot states of times, it won't do it. It may not way. do too well because you know it's a, a lot, not too many people are like you know they're, they're not into. I think Canada, everything. I think you know, Canada yeah, yeah. is more receptive, like let's say yeah, between, Canada, Canada is, is a little bit more receptive to going from death metal to black metal to folk metal and things of that nature, like and yep. putting it on as as a gig. They have a very strong scene up there, so fucking Canada's awesome. But uh, you know, the United States has got its own niche. It, it, it's got its own places, and really, for underground bands like coming over to have a big festival like such something like this, where you can get to see a lot of a lot of different talent. It's really hard. There's not a lot of really big festivals. Like we have Warp Tour and Mayhem Festival and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. But there's only a yeah. couple of them. It's not like out here where every country has their staple mm -hmm. festival mm -hmm. and everybody goes. You know what I mean? So we we have some work to do back over in the states, you guys. But it's still it's a fabulous scene. You know, you, you can go into New York City and have an amazing gig, or go to L.A. and have an amazing gig, or go into Texas and have an amazing gig. But it, it's not it's not the same as over here with yeah, a yeah, festival yeah. with twenty thousand people, yeah. ten thousand people all the Even time. More, yeah. 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 It's, it's insane. Okay. How do you see the uh, death metal scene right now today? Uh, are there any, any new bands that are uh, let's say little that you can uh, let's say uh, they were going to make a breakthrough or something like that or become a bigger one because you you yeah. one of the one of the. Pioneers actually well, the foundation I, of death metal scene. Right. I think there's a bunch of bands. Do you follow actually death metal, metal scene, death metal actually metal scene in general? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, we, you know, I, I follow and stuff. I mean, I don't know all all the bands course, yeah. that you know yeah, out there. There's so, so many, many but, now, you know. But you know, I, I'll 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 listen to you know like satellite radio and stuff like that. Every now and then, you know, you'll hear something that's like, you know, oh yeah, yeah, that, that's pretty sick or whatever, and then you know, or something else and. And I can't remember all the names, all, all yeah, the so but they, there are there are you know some really good bands yeah. out there that you know that are yeah. you know pushing the boundaries or whatever, have a good sound, and um, I mean I, I think look, brutal music, death metal, it, that's always going to be it, it's always going to exist, it's always going to be around. Right, it's hair be, metal it's, will not come better, back again. It's better than disco. Okay, so? Hair metal will not come back. Well, again. I mean, there will not be people going out to go yeah, see. You know, Panther, uh, I mean, right, you know, you know, I mean. <laughs> you know uh, Bullet Boys, and you know, uh, Dockin, and, and, you know, and all that. It's just, Rat. that era, uh, that era won't come back around again, because, you know, the, 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 that generation doesn't know anything about it, and they're not going to go back to 
teasing their hair out wearing girls lingerie. I, I don't think yeah, spandex, like, spandex and spikes yeah. went you know, out. I, I mean, I you, mean you know. they can still go on play because they have our They're, age group, yeah. which is uh -huh. you know forty years uh -huh. old and you know forty to fifty year olds that are like okay, they remember this stuff. They may even pull out that that outfit they used to wear when they were eighteen. You know, it's got got it in the closet and the plastic. And be like, let me squeeze it. Let, let, let me squeeze it. Let me squeeze into this. Squeeze up my hair. You know. But but brutal and, and death metal and stuff like that. I mean, it's always going to be. You know, be yeah, yeah. it's it's it, something that can last time. It, it, it's and it just yeah. progressively. It's will, like it's like a band like Motorhead. Even though they're, they're not death metal, they were like the gnarliest, ruggedest band well, yeah, back in that's from the nineteen sixties you know, all the way like on. But but still, they're. You know, we'll be playing a fest with Motorhead in like five minutes, you know what I mean? <laughs> and he, Lemmy's still going to come out, and he's going to still be in leather, and it's still going to be gnarly. And, you know, yeah. when you can see well, how hard, heavy, hard metal like that just transcends time, yeah, it's not disco, and it's going to die and come back. It's just going to be there. and It's timeless. And, yeah, yeah, and I mean, there's always just going to be the fans that are yeah. the diehard fans that are looking for aggressive music. Oh. They're, they're there. Yeah, they're there. So, it's like, oh, stick it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, a few words about, I would like to know uh, how do you create music, uh, for example, like, uh, do you pick up a guitar, sit at home, pick up a guitar, and just uh, a little bit? Well, yeah, a lot of times, a, a lot of times, I mean, it, And then you get around in a rehearsal room and then play a little bit? Yeah, I mean, a lot, yeah. uh, most of the time, it's he like, I, I, I'll be sitting home and I'll just write riffs and I'll share them with the rest of the guys, and the same with the guys do it, and it's gotten a lot better now that it's the digital age, where you can send your files back and forth and let everybody just do what they want to do. But uh, we did come from the land of, you know, old school, real to real. You have to practice and know, to know what you're doing. So I think over the long run, that kind of paid off for us. by Because us, like, we're all on the same page. But we still do get together and just write riffs. And we still send our riffs back and forth to each other and bounce them off of each other. And, you know, when we're down in the rehearsal room, we'll, we'll just throw ideas around. But a lot of it is also done by everybody individually. So... You know, it's a big mix of, of different yeah, techniques it's, that it's, we uh, use. In order yeah, it's like a group effort. You yeah, know, to try to like, it, yeah, if you're like, yeah, you know, I don't really, I'm not feeling that. Yeah, you got to go back you know, to the drawing changes, board a little bit. Let's do that, you know, so yeah. like, yeah, everyone has input. And you know, it, it's, but he does, he does a lot. It's of forever it. the time. It's like, yo, dude, I'm going to send you over this riff. And it's just like eight minutes later, I'm like, dude. Don't even listen to it. I'm sending you over this one now. Yeah, and he's like, dude, yeah, yeah. did you hear what I did to this? And it's like, all right, man. Let's, you know, and it goes back and forth like that. And then we'll get together and we'll rehearse it out and hear how it feels. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, well, yeah. And everything, yeah. there's yeah. a lot of dynamics and there's just like a lot, as I said, a lot of different techniques that we go about just trying to get the riffs to each other and share it and let everybody collaborate. Okay. Yep. The last one for this interview, uh, the near future of subscription. Any new material in the, well, the progress? You or, uh, know, some there's ideas always or, uh, new yeah, material there's, going on. Yeah, there's new material. We're not stuff. looking to rush anything. Like, let's put it that way. Because, um, for one, you know, as time is going on, it's more difficult for everybody that's in the band that has their jobs, their lives, and everything to always be there all the time. As if we were younger and living at home, we could always just be there and hit it. So, uh, you know, it's better that we take our time, plus I'm more of a scrutinist now because you guys have heard so much stuff that I've written, yeah. that the other guys have written over the last few years <laughs> that, you know, it, it's getting more labor intensive for us to do things that are a little bit more new, you know what I mean? So we have to sit there and go over the riffs and make sure that we're not doing something that we really would go back and kick ourselves in the ass about later, let alone just give it out to you people and expect you to like it. So if we don't like it, then you won't yeah, like it. If we it. like it, <laughs> yeah. hopefully you'll like it. I mean, yeah, then, you know, they, 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 yeah, they, yeah, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. they're always, they will always be like, you know, like some, some form of new music, whether or not you do a full length album, whether you put out some single, you know, like, you know, they, you know they, there's always chances to do something. So that he'll always be right. Yeah, so I mean, always it's a constant, it's a constant you know. thing, you know, if I'm not behind the guitar every day, but just writing a riff uh, or just mixing something or whatever. But we're doing uh, doing a U.S. tour or whatever in October, and then uh, South America in like December, December and stuff and everything. Yeah. So you know, there's and we're hoping different things we coming can, up. So. We're hoping we can get to some of the Far East areas mm -hmm. after that, in the beginning of the new year. Um, you know, obviously, um, with suffocation, you guys have seen the different lineup changes that we've gone through over the years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, fortunately, Dave Colros, you've probably seen us with the last time with, that we were out here. Um, you know, he just, he, he was having a lot of issues and problems and he just decided to say, hey, I got to walk away from this. 
It wasn't by choice. It wasn't like us like doing yeah. something. Or it, it was just it was a mutual thing. It was something that he really felt that he had to do in his life. And uh, so from there, it was a little bit of a setback because otherwise we probably would have been here a little earlier. And then we got lucky and we got Kevin because little old Frank over here was like, call up Kevin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like, okay, call him up. <laughs> And, well, I, was uh, like, I was like, he's yeah. played before. Yeah, yeah that's just true. You know, he's played you know, with us before. When he was a kid. Uh-huh. Yeah. He was like 18 years old, I think. Before he's done the 27,000 billion different recordings yeah. and played in <laughs> so, Six Feet Under and Dying Fetus and everything yeah. else that you know the kid from. But, uh, um, you know, he's turned out to work out really great for, with us. He's a, he's a really good guy. He's playing our music great. Um, you know, I've already started bouncing some things off of him as far as new music and stuff like that so we're going to take our time do these tours work on some material see where everybody's at see what we can do and we'll come back at you when we can cool frank thanks thank you very much for no the problem time. anytime thank you very much cheers and everybody we love you thank you for the support noise eyes viewers coalition noise eyes viewers yeah stay brutal uh Slap someone in the face every now and then for a good time, and we'll see you soon. Absolutely, yes. Really? Take we'll care. We'll try to get there. We'll try to get there, man. Just give us a minute, man. We'll get over there. You know it. All right. Peace out, brutal. We'll see you later.